Okay, Ron, first of all, what are some of your uh, impressions of the debate the other night as far as how each candidate presented themselves and the issues and maybe how aggressively they went at each other or how much they pleaded their case? Yeah, both. Both candidates did great. I'm very pleased with KUM's format also. Really, really neat format. But in general, they, they, they answered all the questions and they gave us all the facts, but the candidates did not go after the middle. They went after their base. And when you go after your base, it's very safe. But the key thing is those 12 to 14 points in the middle, they got to emotionally connect. And I don't think either candidate did that. Was there any one particular issue that, that we proposed to them or that the uh, special interest group proposed to them that you thought they did exceptionally well at or that they outright dodged? Well, I think there's a couple of key points that, that they talked about. So for example, uh, Moylan believes everyone should vote in political status. And then Ginger was talking about even going off island and getting people to vote from off island on political status, which was novel, but it's something that, that can probably become a contested issue in this election. We'll see where that goes. Also, just their approaches to uh, you know, how they're gonna do the job. And both of them claim to have connections in the US Senate, both of them did. I'd like to see those connections. Okay, it seemed, um, going through the footage again, that Ginger kind of played more the role of the aggressor and she would use, you know, my opponent does not, or contrary to what my opponent says and everything, whereas Moylan was more, you know, he didn't go like directly after. Strategically, is there any benefit or risk to that? Well, not not at all, really, because the uh, the when you're the, uh, when you're the person trying to get into office, you have to be more assertive. You have to be, you have to try to show where you feel the incumbent isn't isn't doing things. And then when you're in the incumbent, you're just simply defending what you've already done. So yeah, that's a pretty common pattern. Uh, this is the I call it the trick or treat 2024 election because uh, Thursday is Halloween. So from Halloween, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then the election day. So. Between Thursday and Sunday, it's a long holiday weekend. People are gonna talk, they're gonna to go to a lot of parties, they're gonna to go to a lot of events. Monday is a work day, the employees are all gonna talk about what happened over the long weekend. And then most of the people, the vast majority of people are gonna vote on Tuesday. And so that weekend is really gonna decide a lot of offices for this election. It's gonna decide who's the delegate. It's gonna decide probably at least three to five of the of the people running for the legislature, those are all gonna wobble a lot. I call it the wobbly group. And so that wobbly group is really gonna decide who's who, and it's all gonna be decided on that long holiday weekend, the trick or treat weekend of 2024. Is there anything to win over that wobbly population that either candidate has to do as far as like a bombshell that comes out, maybe directly or indirectly, um, or any tactical moves that they could they could do sure they got to get people to talk to them the most and and getting people to talk about you and 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 talk about not necessarily your ideas just the person remember it's all about at that point at that point at that stage in the election process it's about how emotionally connected people feel they are to the candidate and whether they know the candidate or not and so if they feel they know the candidate and feel they have an emotional connection they'll vote for them okay. and, and that goes for all offices okay and the final question given your experience and the fact that you've forgotten more of these things than most of us will ever remember who won the debate i think it was a definite tie they're both up the middle and in terms of uh, they they didn't go after the wobbly group that's what they're going to have to do to win